youth, what does it give us? The road has us running for money, lust, power, and prestige. What do we get? We get anxiety, depression, sadness, unmet expectations, and above all, fear. Where is God when I'm afraid? <laughs> Let's find out. What an awesome Sunday to be in the house of the Lord with breath in our lungs, living for today, for this moment. We thank you, God. Thank you for the life, the air, the breath, for everything. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. stop this for a second. <laughs> if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right <laughs> with the breath in our lungs this morning. Let's restart the track. <laughs> we thank you for this morning, God. We thank you that you forgive our mistakes and that you bless us with air in our lungs. <laughs> is the air I breathe. And this is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. And I without you 
Let's give it up for the worship team. Where are you, you going? Where are you going? All right. Gianna, how old are you? 13. 13. She's 13. Oh, my goodness. How old are you, Chad? I'm 24. Now, last service you said I was a teenager, which I'll accept, <laughs> but I'm really not. <laughs> how, how old are you, Samaj? Because that's the real question. That's what we want to know. <laughs> I'm 21. <laughs> What'd you say, PB? Thank you. Old enough to run the youth group. That's right. <laughs> Morgan, how old are you? 19. Morgan is 19. <laughs> Give it up one more time for this amazing group of young worshipers, everybody. Give it up. Come on. All right, all right. How old are you? How old are you? Way too old, youngin. <laughs> oh, okay. Whatever. How old are you, man? Oh, man, I'm uh, 33. 33? You look, you look 20. Give it up for the drummer. How old are you, man? Uh, I'm, I'm the same age, 30, 33. You're 33 too? Give it up. Come on. Never mind. <laughs> uh, how are you? How are you? I'm 56, but I play like I'm 26. Let's go! <laughs> we 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 have fun here. If you didn't realize that yet. <laughs> Good morning, church. How are we doing this morning? That's right. So. Give you guys a little backstory. I'm the Student Government Association president at Delaware State University, and all the freshmen have officially moved in. Yeah, the freshmen. And there's like over 800 of them, I think. So they told me, they were like, yeah, you know, you got to give a speech to the freshmen, all that. So I'm thinking, I'm like, what speech do you want to give them? So I had this speech that I wrote a while ago, and I thought it'd be appropriate to give them this speech. So when I was giving my speech, the first words of my speech were, you were born with value and purpose. And it, it, it's so crazy because as these new generations arise, they're not taught that God has given them this value and purpose. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what, what university tells me. I don't care what organization tells me. I'm going to let people know that my God has given me value and purpose. So we're going to proclaim that today with two hands raised. And we're going to say it with gusto. Say it like this. I was born. Now, how do we know that? Because Psalm 23, 4 tells us, let's read together. It says this, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come from me. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. So your mission is to go north, east, south, and west and ask someone, what are you doing for Labor Day? You're loose. Christian Growth Times 2. Ha! Don't worry, you don't have to be tiny to be in GCG. Guaranteed Christian Growth is a rewarding course designed to learn the fundamentals of Christianity with lessons on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how to read the Bible, and finding your place in the church service. And more! Class starts September 8th. 
Sign up today on the connection card you receive when you come into the sanctuary. Hey, man, just put us down. What are you doing? Dude, what are you going to do to us? You know, I'm feeling very hungry. <laughs> Good morning, people. I'm just going to ignore the comments from the peanut gallery. Um, <laughs> welcome to the Gloucester County Community Church. Thank you guys so much for coming on this lovely Sunday. Um, for those of you who are new or don't know me, my name is Christina Rodriguez. I am 22 years old. I was dedicated here, baptized here, and I'm blessed to be able to continue to serve in my young adult years. Um, and as I said before, for those of you who are new, we would love to have a record of your attendance. If you could fill out the welcome card that you were given upon entering the sanctuary, that would be awesome. Um, and for those of you online, welcome as well. And you can text NEW to 856-861-4144 or email bruce at gccpray.com. Um, in regards to all offerings, ties, correspondence, as well as the welcome card, you can place that in the offering baskets upon leaving the sanctuary. And um, in regards to giving, guys, I know it's been a tough year, but just remember that God provides. Um, so I want to bring a little bit of attention to what's going on in Afghanistan right now. Um, we all gave our ages. Samaj, you know how to give it. And um, the 13 that were killed by the suicide bomber were all around my age. And I'm a kid. The reason that I get to stand up here and praise my God freely and have no fear is because of the sacrifices that they made for us. Um, so if you all could stand with me, I would love to just have a moment of silence for them. And then we will pray. Lord, I come to you this Sunday morning with the heaviest of hearts. I thank you for allowing all who hear this prayer another day of life, but I also want to pray for those who are not with us today, that you would watch over them as well as those on vacation, that you would let them enjoy the beauty of your creation wherever they are. I want to especially pray for the turmoil that is happening in Afghanistan. Lift up our troops that they may return home safely those that are innocent and being persecuted, and the families of our soldiers who have lost their lives fighting for justice and freedom. May you bring peace and comfort to all that are suffering. Lord, I also pray for Patty McFall, who was in surgery and is now currently in the ICU recovering, that you would lay a healing hand on her, as well as her family, and we thank you and bless you that her tumor was malignant. I lift up this offering to you, Lord, that you would bless this church, our congregation, as well as its leaders, and our nation as a whole. I pray for Mike Beckford that you would lead him with your voice and spirit today. I pray that you would strengthen the weak, bind up the bruised and broken, put healing in the bodies of the sick, bring home those who have drifted from you, and save the lost. Almighty Father, Creator, I pray that we would all win one in 2021. In your everlasting name I pray, amen. Hello, we are Walt and Jane Thomas from Gloucester County Community Church. We've gone here for 38 years and we're also on the mission committee. This month we are featuring humanility in the Philippines. Philippines always uh, seems to struggle with natural disasters and when Typhoon Haiyan hit northern Cebu and, and the Visayan Islands and realized that there were many children who had been abandoned because their parents uh, were washed away by the typhoon and, and these children had no one to care for them. How can you be involved? You can give to a sponsor a child for school. Lord willing, the 2022 GCCC missions trip to the Philippines has been approved. Dates to be determined. 
express interest by emailing missions at gccpray.com. Well, church, I want to invite you to your feet for this next song. Uh, it's actually an original, and it was written by Michael Beckford, our very own, and it's called The Proclamation Song. So it goes right along with our proclamation. purpose. No one, no one can ever take that from me. And I know that the world is going to try, but you, my God, have set me free. I was born with value and purpose. No one can take that from me. I know the world will try, but you have set me free. I was born with value and purpose. No one can take that from me. I know the world will try, but you have set me free. I was born with value and purpose. No one can take that from me. This is my proclamation, written in your word, branded on my heart, I want to know you better, speak into my soul, come and make 
make me whole I live for you I live for you I was born with value and purpose No one can take that from me I know the world will try But you have set me free Amen, amen, amen As the Holy Spirit was, was speaking through me and linking lyric and, and melody and, 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 and chorus and the song came together, I just remember thinking, when, when people hear this, it's going to touch their heart, especially in this church. These are words that we've been saying for years, and now we can take this and we can just proclaim it over the world. And how better to do that than in song. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. You get the angle right. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Love you guys. Get the PB angle. Now, listen. <laughs> you guys can sit down, by the way. You can take a seat. Thank you so much. Amazing, amazing service so far. Now, listen. So... Every week, my, my girlfriend and I, we attempt to do some kind of date day or date night. You know, we want to keep it, we want to keep it fresh every single week. Do something new we like to do. We love to go to the park. We like to do some kind of adventure, escape room, something to challenge us. But what we love to do, or what I love to do, is I love to eat. Oh, yeah. Favorite place to eat right now is the Cheesecake Factory. Ugh. Come on. Anybody's a fan of Cheesecake Factory in here? Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. So we go to the Cheesecake Factory that we love. That's one of our recurring places if we were to do something, and we love it. Now, just shortly two weeks ago, actually, um, I actually have not been in my job that I'm usually in, the role that I'm in. I actually left the company I was at, came into some financial trouble. But you know what God really provided, and he showed me in this situation. So it's our usual Thursday morning. We're running errands, and, you know, my, I was like, hey, we're going to go out. Let's do Cheesecake Factory, feeling cheesecake. I actually promised her a few days before we would do Cheesecake Factory. So she was expecting it. She was ready. Now, I was supposed to get paid that day, but something had happened, and I didn't. And my bank account said, oh, no, you don't. Uh -uh. You better sit yourself at home, young man. Mm -hmm. Now, I was determined. I said, I made a promise, and I love keeping promises. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna, we're going to do it. So we hop in the car. We're running our errands. And I'm like, we're going to the Cheesecake Factory. Now, fast, uh, I'm actually going to back it up. A few weeks before, you know, I had been out of work. So I had been selling some things. I had like, I'm a Gen Z, or, you know, I have a million computers and laptops and iPads for no reason. So I was like, just selling stuff, making bills. And I sold a laptop to a good friend of mine. And it was funny. Because he, he, I dropped it off to him. He said, hey, I'm going to pay you this up front. If I really like this thing, I'll pay you in a few days some more money. A few days. Three weeks go by. And I didn't, th I didn't think of anything of it. I just kind of you know, forgot, moved on. But then, this day, the day that I had no money, but I made a promise. We're going to go. We're going to eat from Cheesecake Factory. We're sitting there running our errands. We're about to hop in the car, about to go. And I'm like, I don't, she, she knows. I'm telling her. So she's like, we don't have to go. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going. And God will provide. At that point, I lifted it up to God. I said, you know what? He will provide cheesecake. <laughs> and funny enough, I get a text message from this exact person who bought the laptop three weeks ago. No contact since then. And they were like, oh, yeah, stop by my place. I have 500 bucks for you. Thanks? What happened? I was like, thank you so much. Like, seriously, I put that prayer out there and God just provided. I mean, not every prayer is instantaneous like that, so that was special. That was something special. So if you're thinking like, okay, God provides even cheesecake, that's good. We didn't have to go. We didn't have to, truly. We didn't have to go. We could have saved money, done something else, not gone at all, run in the park, whatever. But I really believe God put that situation right in front of me so I could share it with you today. Something as tiny as that. It's these little miracles. Because sometimes, or a lot of the time, we succumb to our, ex uh, to our circumstances and expectations. The circumstances that happen around us all the time. If I had just not taken action and gone, you know what? 
no money. We're just going to do something. Oh, who knows what we're going to do? If I acted that way in such a small situation, imagine how I would act in bigger situations. And the truth is, we got to lift it to God in these situations because our circumstances can deter us easily. And that's where our faith comes in. However, faith is a bit more of a cosmetic word today. We use faith for a lot of things. The world will say faith. We'll all say faith, 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 faith. But when did faith become something so cosmetic versus something that was deeply rooted inside of us? That we had faith no matter what. I'll prove it to you. Has anybody ever flicked on a light switch? By a show of hands, I know there's a few of you. Most of you were like, a light switch? No, yeah, not a trick question. You flicked on a light switch before, and when you flicked on the light switch, did you go, please turn on? <laughs> it worked. I'm so surprised. Thank you, lights. No, it's the light's job to turn on. So at the end of the day, how can we have more faith in a light switch than the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything around us? Sometimes we pray and we're thinking, God, I hope he hears me. I don't know if he likes me anymore. He didn't ask my prayer from three years ago. Or whatever thing we conjure up in our mind. And the truth is, we got to put our faith in him. But the trap of circumstance, we're not the only one who falls into it. In fact, we're going to look in the book of Matthew. Because Peter fell into the trap of looking at his circumstance. Now, Everyone, let's stand up. Let's get on our feet. Let's get some energy rolling here. So, allow me to paint the picture before we go into Matthew 14. So, right now, Jesus and the disciples are doing the world tour. Samaj, you can bring my boat up. I brought a boat today. That'd be awesome. Thank you. I'm going to show you. So, we're doing the world tour. You know, your favorite band. Thank you. <laughs> it's like deflated. First service, I was jumping on that thing. So, we go around, we're doing a world tour. Jesus and the disciples, they're going around. You know when your favorite band comes to town? You're like, I can't wait. Oh, this is going to be awesome. They're like building up some like, everyone wants to see Jesus. This is awesome. So that's what they're going around doing. The woman with the blood issue was just healed. Blind man was healed. The mute spoke. Jesus had told a ton of parables. And he had just fed the 5,000. After he had sent the people away, then a few disciples went onto the boat. He said, go out. I will meet you over there. Now we're going to pick up, going to Matthew chapter 14, verse 25. We're going to read this together, all right? Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. That's strange. Let's keep going. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. They cried out for fear. We'll stop right there. So they didn't know it was Jesus. Oh my gosh, there's some figure walking towards us. It's a ghost. There's fear in the air. Let's keep moving. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. All right, we'll keep going. So he said, come. Stop right there. Peter was like, if it's you, ask me to step. And Jesus is Jesus. Is Jesus. So he's like, uh, yeah, come on, let's do it. Come on, buddy. How about the boat? Let's walk together. We'll pick it up from after come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, You truly are the Son of God. So let's paint the picture. Come on, let's do this together. You can take a seat. Come on, take a seat. So we got our boat. Let's do this together. So the boat's out here on the water. All the guys are in it. Peter's in it. He says, he see a ghost. He said, if it's you, Jesus, tell me to come. Jesus said, come on, brother, let's do this together. So he steps out of the boat, and he's walking on water. Imagine if, you're, if you start walking on water, you're like, oh, my goodness, it's happening. It's happening. You're like walking on water. And you know what? Peter began to sink. Now, why did Peter begin to sink? That's the real question. Is it because he just didn't practice walking on water ahead of time? No. Did Jesus let him uh, start to sink? No. Let's take a look at verse 30 again. 
But when he saw. say it again, saw. one more time, saw. when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. There was a shift in focus. He saw. He saw the wind and the waves. He saw what was happening around him. Doesn't make sense to you yet? Let me bring it to your level. He saw his financial situation. He saw the sickness in his family. He saw the alpha, beta, delta, epsilon variant. He saw comparison, bad habits, depression. He saw anxiety. He saw the circumstances that he was surrounded in, in the middle of the storm. And that is exactly why he began to sink. Because there's one person he was looking at. And who is that person? Exactly. We do the same thing. We look at all the things happening around us and we think to ourselves, oh my goodness, what's happening? I don't, I don't know. I can't control everything happening around me. And you know what? I don't even think it was just the fact that Peter was starting to sink. I think it was a thought in his mind. And I may not say it in the text, but I can strongly infer that when he began to sink, he probably at some point thought, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to drown? Is Jesus going to save me? All these questions. You know, you, we, some of us have been there, right? When you're driving your car and like a deer shoots out in front of your car. And then you like swerve out of the way. But in a split second, the amount of thoughts you think before a possible collision. We've been there before, right? And you're actually amazed your brain can move that fast. And all these thoughts that happen. Imagine going down in the water after you were just walking on that thing. And then all the thoughts that come into your mind. Listen. He was concerned what would happen to him. We do the same thing. You know what I say about that? I say that's being self-centered. There, I said it. It's being self-centered. You see, when we think self-centered, my mom used to say, people self-centered, you think you're all that in a bag of chips. I like that. I still say to this. You think you're all that in a bag of chips. Self-centeredness doesn't always look like that. Sometimes self-centeredness looks like, what's going to happen to me? When I fail, what's going to happen to me when I lose my job? What's going to happen to me? Parents, you wake up in the morning and you hear a crash in the kitchen and you know your kids have done something they should not have been doing. You're like, oh, my kitchen, what happened? You run downstairs. You're thinking all about what happens to us. That's how we're ingrained. That's natural. But God is beyond the natural. He moves so many different ways. So it's important that we don't just focus on ourselves. Because you know what? You are your biggest distraction. Really. You know, the world's going to tell you, right? Self-care. Samaj, focus on you. All these people will be fine if you just focus on yourself. If you just improve every single part of you you don't like. If you have this laundry list of things you don't like about yourself, you just make yourself get better in every single thing, life will work. But you know why that doesn't work? Because who's, <laughs> this is a terrible question. Who's ever done a weight loss journey before? I did. We've all done it before, right? You don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to. And you know what happens after your first, after you have a really good day, I had a salad, I had the chicken breast and broccoli, and then you're there 2 a.m. and you're like, there's a pack of Oreos in the pantry. <sighs> there's ice cream in the freezer. <clears throat> just one row of cookies, just one row of cookies, I'll be fine. And now you're back to square one. You're eating Applebee's the next day. Like that, that's what happens to us. What? We fail over and over and over and over again. That's why it's not about us. That's why it's not about our circumstance. You know what happens? You know what I think about self-love? That's what I think. I just think, say self-care one more time. It is not about this self-care notion that you have to be the one who's in charge of you. They say, take care of number one. You are not number one. And as soon as you let yourself go, that's when you're able to come to the altar, be on your knees and pray and go, Jesus, fill me. How can he fill you if you're full of yourself or other things? How can you do that? When you approach, you approach empty. When you approach empty, then he's able to fill you. He loves when you approach him empty because you say, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. But you know, Christians, we're funny people. We are. Because we like to box things up. You see, we take circumstances like my, my date scenario, which is a very small 
example of a little miracle. But you know what? That, it's not that hard to give that to God. And it felt a little weird in the moment, not knowing where the money would come from, a little bit of fear and anxiety, whatever. But to give that to God is nothing compared to giving to God your emotional state when you lose a loved one. It's nothing compared to when you look at yourself in the mirror and you genuinely hate what you see and you don't want to be on this planet anymore. Giving that to God is so much harder. I got quiet in the room, but like, that's tough, man. That's tough. Yeah, it is tough. But those deep things in your mind and in your heart that you know you just slip into your back pocket so you get your brownie points and you say, I gave it to God for the little things. You need to take those big things out of your back pocket and lay it at the altar because that is where God is to be able to heal it. You have to let him in. And these are the circumstances that prevent us from staying afloat on the water. I saw this really good TikTok video, which I know I have. I think I'm good. All right, we're moving. We're moving. I was watching this cool TikTok video. Anybody on TikTok around here? All the young people are like, yeah, I'm on TikTok. Yeah, Kelly on TikTok. Awesome. <laughs> so, of course, I tried to find a video, but I couldn't find it for the life of me because TikTok, it comes and it goes. But there was this young woman who she was praying in the spirit and she was overwhelmed with the spirit and she was speaking against the spirit of anxiety. And you know what the shocking part about it was? I always look in the comments. I look to what people say. And when I looked in the comments, all these people who were claiming to be Christians and believers were condemning her. They were saying, no, 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 hold on. Anxiety is real. And you, you, you can't just pray it away. You, you just can't, you can't just do that. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Anxiety isn't a spirit. It's, it's this and that. They try to have this mumbo jumbo and connect some random scripture they saw to it. It doesn't even make sense. And I am appalled. I'm like, wait a minute. You're trying to tell me our powerful God, the creator of everything, parted the Red Sea, made the land dry for the Israelites to move through and crash the waves over the Egyptians. The God who is about all the turnaround and miracles can't release anxiety from you? Haven't you ever thought that maybe the amount of faith that we put into this is not as much as we should? Seriously, I'll be real with you. I think that we, we box, like I said, we box things up. We'll box up those things up. It's so as if we're kind of afraid to see if it'll work or not. We're kind of afraid to see if I keep praying for this anxiety to go away, if it doesn't, am I going to lose my faith? But I still believe. And I think it is more, more than important to raise everything up to God. Is it okay to get professional help? Absolutely. But I'll be the one to say it if no one said it to you before. Prayer works. Prayer works. And it's not just like the one-time prayer when you get up in the morning, you just like go about your life. It's constant. It's an accessory prayer. It's prayer over your life and the lives of people around you. It's constant. It's talking to God. How often are you speaking to him? Or how often are you allowing your circumstances to lead the way? Let's look at 2 Timothy for a second. Now, this was a bit of a, a scripture that I wanted to put in there because it's just so important. I'm going to read this to you guys. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. That's the key. That's what we're starting to see boil up. And it's been in our world for a long time, but now it's the forefront you see, the spirit of the Antichrist, he, he, he's going to try and claim to be God at some point. So we need to understand. If you haven't read, the, if you like, know what you're talking about, start reading. This is important stuff to understand that there's a spirit that wants you to understand God is real, but will try and deny and suck the power that we understand and know so that we will stand here and say, oh, that issue, you can pray for this, but don't, you got to do extra for that. God can't handle that one. And that is just not true. Light switch, God. Where does our faith lie more? And the truth is, Christianity is not a spectator sport. 
You don't get to sit on the sidelines. And you don't get to just watch from the outside and think that it's all happening for you. But the truth is, you got to be a player on the field. That is why in Hebrews says not to neglect the coming together, coming to church, being involved, taking classes. We don't make these classes as like promotional tools. No, you need to come to GCG so you can understand the word better, understand the things you didn't know. I watch people in this church transform complete 180 just from getting involved. Christianity is not a spectator sport. This month's sermon series is Where is God When I Am Afraid? And we have heard phenomenal sermons. But as I end it out, I challenge that question. Let's think about their story. Where was Jesus when Peter was afraid and he was stepping out of the boat? Where was he? Did Jesus go anywhere? Did Jesus move? In fact, Jesus said three things in that entire text. He said, what? Be of good cheer, it is I. Then what did he say? He also said, come. And then a question, you have little faith, why did you doubt? This is one of the most powerful stories, in my opinion, the entire word. And Jesus said three things. Why? God does not go anywhere. But where was Peter? He was looking at the wind and the waves when they were boisterous. The question is not, where is God when I am afraid? The question is, where am I when I am afraid? That's the question. God has not left the throne. He's still within us. Where am I when I am afraid? Where am I when things aren't going well? Are you at the bar or the club? Are you scrolling through your social media endlessly? Are you filling your mind with meaningless trash music? Are you seeking the advice of people that have no trace of Jesus within them? Are you opening up your browser in the middle of the night looking at things you know you shouldn't be looking at? Are you calling an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend or an ex-wife or an ex-husband saying, just come over, just come over, we can just, we can just, we can just chill, just come over, knowing what you really want? Are you letting bad thoughts rule your mind? Or are you on your knees in the prayer closet? Are you praying? Are you praising? Lord, I praise you in the storm, and I will lift my hands. You know who you are no matter where I am. That's the truth. Where are you at when you are afraid? Are you talking to people who have your best interest at heart, but most importantly, love God more? Are you filling yourself with his word about what he says about you, not what the world says about you? That's what's most important. And you will find that Jesus is right there. He's right there looking at the boat. He's saying, hey, come on out. Hey, Steve, come out. Hey, Janice, come. Come walk. I want you to walk with me on this water. I know this is unfamiliar territory. But you know what? I know you. And when you know me, we walk together. And we don't have to worry about it no more. Your financial situation won't matter anymore. The fact that they left you won't matter anymore. The loss of your child, you caught it close to your heart, but Jesus is right there with you. There's a void that is filled when you walk with him, and it's your choice. We've already stepped out of the boat. You are here. Congratulations. You already stepped out. It's true, but you're sinking. You may be sinking. And when you're sinking, you're looking around you. And the truth is, focus on him. He's right there with you. Last thing I'll share with you. My parents are very faithful people. I love them so much. And every day before school, they'd pray for us. And they'd also make sure that we read and memorize Psalms 91. Now, over the years, you know, of course, getting to adulthood, I, I fell off of it. So I don't know it all off the top of my head. But I wanted to share this first part with you. Let's all stand up together for the reading of the word of our almighty God. Let's read this together. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. That is my hope for all of you that you abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Your circumstances don't define you. God does. Know his word, what he says about you. And that is the beginning of a whole new life. Now, if you're here and you don't know Jesus and you want to know him better, you're like, hey, Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get it. I'm, I'm stepping out of this proverbial boat, but, you know, I feel like I'm sinking and I've been drowning for so long. The truth is, 
if you didn't even know Jesus was there, it's an easy process to be able to step into that salvation. The world does not offer redemption, but our God does. His son took the cross so we didn't have to die for our sins. And it honestly is as simple as ABC. A, we admit that we're sinners. In other words, we have done things that are wrong. And we all know we've done things that are wrong. Little, big, in between in your eyes, he knows. But B, we believe that he died on the cross for the remission of our sins. He took it all on so we didn't have to die in that stead. He did it for us. It's a covenant. And C, we commit our lives to him. We live for him. When you live for yourself, you fail. You live for your spouse, you fail. You live for your kids, you fail. You were ready for that one. That's not why you're here. It's a gift God has given us. We live for him. And D, do it today. If I'm not the first one who's told you, guess what? You can leave today. Anything can happen. Secure eternity now. Even if you don't fully understand it. It's one of those things where you dive in first. Peter stepped out. He didn't know what was going to happen. You step out. You're already out. Secure that. Get close to him. Let's all bow our heads and pray together. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the moments you've given us. We thank you for this day. Lord, we admit that we're sinners. We admit that we know we have missed the mark. But we believe your son took the cross for us. Before we were even a twinkle in our mother's eye, you have secured each and every one of us. And we commit ourselves to you, Father. And we want to do this right here, right now. Please open our hearts, Lord. We want you to reside within us, not the world. We want to have you. We put away our circumstances and we commit to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now I want you to keep your eyes closed. All of you, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. If you have prayed that prayer for the first time or if you are recommitting yourself to Christ, I want you to just raise your hand. No one can see you. It's just me, you, and the Lord. Thank you. I see you right there. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. I see you in the balcony. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. I see you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can open up your eyes. Now, if you prayed, we would love to have a record of your first time decision on the card that you got on your way in. Just fill out the bottom portion on the back side. Or if you're more tech savvy like myself, feel free to text PRAY to 856-861-4144 or email bruce at gccpray.com. Thank you so much. We're going to bless you in song. can do to let you down it doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now
So uh, I think, not I think, I believe it would be appropriate that we say thank you to our young adults who have led us in worship today. It was certainly a profound thought when Christina this morning said, you know, those who lost their lives were our age. And if they're young enough to go to soil and protect us, then as the Lord said through Paul to Timothy, don't let anybody despise you because of your youth. I put a word in your mouth. Speak it. Charles Haddon Spurgeon was 17 when he was saved. He took his first church when he was 19. And he, for all intent and purposes, changed the world before he died at the age of 54. So one more time for all our young adults who have led us in worship, let's say thank you for what they brought. You truly were a blessing. And Michael, great word. We should say thanks to Mike. Wow, powerful. You know, you, you hear sermons on this subject all the time. And, oh, Peter took his eyes off Jesus. I'm glad Michael didn't say that because the text never says it. The text says, just like Jesus is in our lives, Jesus is in front of us, that we see everything else and the situation looks bigger than the God who's right in front of us. And I thought he just did such a wonderful job making us realize that there's so many situations that we look at and say are bigger than our God when our God isn't. He's just saying, step out of the boat. That's all. All right, you may be seated. Listen, we're at that place in our um, season in our church life where we have the privilege of um, those who have received Christ testifying it to it through the waters of baptism. There are no, coincid no coincidences in or with God. You know, somebody will say, that's a coincidence, not with God. No coincidences with God. He knows the beginning from the end. So this morning in my quiet time, as I'm reading the word of God, the passage of scripture but that I systematically, I systematically read through the Bible, the passage of scripture that I read was Acts chapter 16. You say, what's that? <laughs> Let me give it to you. So Paul and Silas are preaching the gospel. There is a demon possessed young girl who has made her owners a lot of money. And she's following them around saying, you are proclaiming Jesus, the son of God, God, the son. But she became annoying. So Paul said, in the name of Jesus, spirit be gone. And the spirit was gone. Well, her owners got upset because she was their livelihood and she gave them a good livelihood. So um, they decided they were going to stir up the crowd. Paul and Silas got beat, thrown into prison. And at 12 o'clock at night, they began to praise God that they could suffer for his namesake. And they were singing hymns and praising God. And God sent an earthquake, opened up every prison cell. Everyone was loose to go out, but nobody left. And the Philippian jailer said, truly, the man you speak of must be the son of God. He invited, he invited Paul and Silas to his home. He shared the gospel. Every one of his members received Christ and were baptized. That was my reading today when we're baptizing eight people. Seven is God's number of completion. Eight is God's number of beginning. So I was thinking for all who have been baptized, this is your new, this is a beginning for you, this moment of baptism. So there are four reasons why we should be baptized. First, because Jesus commanded it. Secondly, just follow his example. Thirdly, it's a New Testament pattern, as I read to you this morning or shared with you this morning from Acts 16. And lastly, 
It unites us in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord. That's the picture. Buried with him in baptism, risen to a new life in Christ, or if we pour even sprinkled, it's the picture that the old life has gone away, dissolved into the earth, bottom of the pool, whatever it is, and you're standing there in a new life in Christ Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. So we are going to baptize. All right, Rick, tell everybody right. who you are. Uh, my name is Rick Hodge. <laughs> you have a little fame club out there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Tell us when and where you received Christ. Um, I'm not sure exactly. It was somewhere in, uh, like, 91, a long, long time ago. Uh, that would have been the first time, but uh, I was actually asking a couple people about uh, how to answer this question, and I, I keep saying I, I receive him daily. Every day is, so I don't remember the first time. I just remember the last time. All right, when was the last time? This morning. (laughs) (laughs) Every day. (laughs) Well, you're saved once. You realize that. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart. God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Yes. So your spirit is instantaneously born again when you say, Lord, here I am. Yes. Your your soul, mind, will, and emotions is being born again. That's why every day we renew ourselves, yes. like you said. Read your Bible and pray. And then one day, your body will be born again because you'll get a new one. And everybody said, yeah. all right. You know Jesus lives in your heart? Yes, sir. You ready to be baptized? Absolutely. All right. Would you like me to use the name Rick Hodge? Sure. Any other suggestions? No, whatever you suggest. All right. I'm just thinking, I'm not so sure Rick's a Bible name. We're going to put a Bible name in the middle. Rick Joseph Hodge. I like that. All right. Rick Hodge, upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Woo! introduce yourself hi my name is tiffany santos and uh tiffany can you recall when and where you received christ yes october 14th 2016 do you know where that was fox chase cancer center are you right now fighting this battle still and when was it you first uh my first I was diagnosed um, March 11th, 2014, but October um, 14th, 2016 is when I found out it was stage four. But you're here today. Praise God I am. And that day, my doctor told me, textbook, you only have 18 to 24 months to live. I looked at her and I said, I'm not textbook. <laughs> that was seven years ago practically yes and the five-year survival rate for what i have it is called uterine lyomyosarcoma is only 14 percent and i'm defying statistics every day amen that's awesome <laughs> Whether you, whether you defy those statistics here or not, guess what? You're going to defy them in eternity forever and ever and ever. Our prayers are with you, and we're trusting that God is going to do an absolute miraculous work in your life. Jesus lives in your heart? Yes, he does. Then we're going to testify to it. <laughs> Tiffany Santos, upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You don't need a cheat sheet. I do. No, 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 right over here. 
Let me see. I think I should hold you up. <laughs> Can everybody see? Yeah. Tell everybody who you are. Oh, my name is Stacy West. Well, there's a middle initial. What's that stand for? A. Yeah. Ann. Ann. Stacy Ann. Stacy Ann. Yes, sir. So can you recall when and where you received Christ? Tell uh, them, not me. Okay, yeah. yes, I recall. Um, it was March the 11th uh, this past year. Uh, I was at GCC and praying with my good friend, Angelina Johnson. And uh, after we got done praying, I felt the Holy Spirit come into my heart. And at that time, I knew that I wanted to uh, publicly proclaim uh, Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And today you're doing I it. I am doing that. And yes. Yeah, my, my life has changed beyond my wildest dreams, and I'm so grateful. Romans 8, 16 says, His spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the child of God. And that's what happened when you just knew in that moment. That's that right. the Holy, Holy Spirit had entered your life. Mm -hmm. And then you have a good coach in Steve. I'm sure he's right. doctrinally putting you on the right track. Always. Even if the pastor's off, he'll make sure you're on the right track. Oh, I know. We're uh, yeah. similar. Yeah. Uh, we are similar? Oh, yes. uh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good thing. All right. Good. Jesus lives in your heart. We're going to testify to it. Okay. Trisha Ann West, upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Okay. God bless you. You can tell everybody who you are. Hi, my name is Ryan Paul Verdi. And Ryan Paul Verdi, can you recall when and where you received Christ? I absolutely can. Um, my beautiful mother raised me in a Christian household, uh, but unfortunately I didn't listen much. And um, I was just reading in Romans how it says we're all going to fall short of God's gracious standards, and I uh, definitely did that. And it led me to uh, Seabrook uh, Detox Rehabilitation Center. And on July 16th, uh, Angelina and Fred came in and shared their experience, strength, and hope. And on that night, um, after crying about five gallons of tears, I decided that I absolutely want to dedicate my life to Christ. Amen. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, gotta, we have to make sure we get all of you chain breakers a picture of all of you today. So after the Absolutely. service, don't, don't split, right? Let's get a picture of all the chain breakers who have been reached through our chain breakers ministry and today walking in these waters of baptism, testifying to a new life in Christ. Amen. What a great, great testimony, Ryan. Paul was the middle name? Ryan Paul Verdi, upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's give it up. Tell everybody who you are. My name is Michael James Murphy. Michael James Murphy. Yep. Glad it's not Phil. Oh, I didn't say that. I'm sorry. Um, all right, Michael. Um, tell us when and where you received Christ. I received Christ uh, in, the, in the early stages of May. Um, I also am a member of Chain Breakers. I, I'm an addict, and I uh, was very selfish. Uh, it wasn't until God took my family away from me that I was able to, to, to see that I, I needed, I was so desperate where I was able to, to be reaching out to God again because I, I grew up Catholic for the last 17 years. I just was living in my own addictive lifestyle, you know, doing my will, not God's. And uh, God took my family away from me, my kids, and uh, to teach me what I need to do. So uh, I got, 
I, I got, um, I've been praying to God ever since uh, the night that I lost my family to, to, to my disease. So we're going to pray that the Lord keeps you sober and gives you back your family. And it'll be in a greater measure than you ever dreamed. Amen. 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 You know, I, I sit in chain breakers and I hear them say, you know, I am an addict and it, it drives me crazy <clears throat> because I understand why they say that. Because if they think for a moment that this addiction isn't going to trip them up again, um, they've got something coming that every day they have to realize this is what I was. And if I don't do something about it, it's going to be where I am again. But I'm also reminded of the scripture where the Apostle Paul said, and this is what you once were. And in the eyes of Jesus, he doesn't see you as an addict. You may tell yourself that so you don't wind up there, but he doesn't see you that way. He sees you holy and blameless and without any reproach. And listen, what you can't lick here, you've licked forever. Because that's the power of our God. One more time, let's give it up for Michael, Ryan, Chris. Did you hear what I said? Oh. Shh. Michael James Murphy, upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I now baptize you with this cold water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless you. Love you. So you're going to tell all these chain breakers he saved the best to last. Is that it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Step up to the mic. Let everybody know who you are. Hi, my name is Joshua Cole Albritton. Joshua, second name? Middle name is Cole. Last name is Albritton. Albritton. Yep. A-L-B-R-I-T-T-O-N. O-N. Yep. You're the first person to get it correct. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> and what nationality? Um, Albritton. What is that? I have no idea. I'm white and Hispanic. I love it. That's one way to figure it out, right? I'm just white and Hispanic. It works for me. I don't know much of my family. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, tell us when and where you received Christ. Um, January 14th of 2014. But since then, I've kind of veered off the wrong path. So I want my father to continue to live through me. So here I am today. Ready for a fresh start. Amen. Amen. Mr. Albritton, upon your public profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Give it up. Hey, sir. All right, let us stand, shall we? For those of you who witnessed this baptism today or baptisms and you've yet to be baptized, may I suggest that you walk through the waters of baptism. Oh, we have one more? Oh, yes, Joanne, I'm sorry. Anybody got clippers? <laughs> I did it the wrong way. Sorry. Sorry, oh you're my learning. Gosh. <laughs> you're learning. How much am I going to pour? You go get that picture. We're going to use. It. No, I'm only kidding. We'll use this. So, um, Joanne, tell everybody who you are, when and where you were saved, and what's brought you to this point, this moment in your life. I'm Virginia Barnes. Um, I was saved here. Uh, Father, Pastor Gaines, on Father's Day, a few years back, 
Amen. I don't remember the exact year of my Bible. It's in my Bible. Oh, it's still packed. <laughs> we'll have to make sure Pastor Gaines uh, sees this moment. And what's brought you to this place? I want to be baptized. Amen. You know Jesus lives in your heart? Yes, I do. So. This is a new, new life in Christ. Yes, it does. And uh, publicly, I'd like to commit to Jesus. Amen. Well, you're going to do it now. Samaj, give me a hand. Joanne Barnes, upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's give it up for an amazing service once more. Yes. How you hold up down there, Grandma? You, hit, you you're feeling good, right? Yeah, she says she's feeling good. Feel, give it up one more time, everybody. One more time. So just a few brief instructions. Please remain in place until an usher dismisses you. We want to thank everyone for joining us here in person and on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining the Gloucester County Community Church. Um, second thing is remember to place all offering and correspondence, which is going to be FTDs, prayer, um, and visitor cards. Thank you for um, joining us today once again. And please place them in the offering baskets upon leaving the sanctuary. Um, I just want to leave you all with a blessing before we leave. Um, may the peace of the Lord be upon you leaving the sanctuary. I pray that as we continue the week, we just step out of the boat and trust in God. I pray that we look at God in midst of fear and consult him in all that we do. God, I thank you for the foundation that we have here at the Gloucester County Community Church. I thank you for all that you have done for us and what you're going to do for us in the future, God. Thank you for an amazing service of baptisms, and I pray that we consider you and seek your face in all that we do. Thank you for what you have laid upon our heads, God. Thank you. In your name, amen.